those of you that were with us yesterday, you had the opportunity to hear from and in that sense meet the local devotee who is going to be guiding us again today, Rameshwara Tirtha Prabhu, a local resident of Ayodhya, disciple of Radhana Swami and father of three lovely girls. On the car ride back from the places we visited yesterday, he brought up an interesting topic which connects with the topic that we discussed yesterday. It's exploring a deep mystery. So you're ready for a deep mystery? As best as I can recall the discussion, <coughs> he <coughs> said he, he personally has a question that he then discussed with other sadhus and elevated personalities in Ayodhya. And the question goes something like this. This isn't verbatim, but something like this. In Vrindavan, there's this mood of ananda, bliss and joy and mirth and happiness. And here in Ayodhya, that same mood is missing. Why? That was his question to these sadhus and their response was, here in Ayodhya, Ram was banished for 14 years and although he came back after 14 years and became the king for 11,000 years, he banished Sita and had to live as the king in the absence of Sita, feeling those feelings of separation from Sita and so the Ananda aspect is, is missing. That's what he shared in the car ride. I may have gotten it not exactly right, but that's what I recall in the essence of his message. So the mystery, it's a mystery of Ayodhya, we touched upon yesterday. And for those of you that would like to research this further, I'm going to share some things, but if you'd like to research it further for your spiritual edification, you can read portions of chapter 34 of Nectar Devotion. And detail in detail is found in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu because Nectar Devotion, some of you in the audience, your teachers, so you'll appreciate this Nectar Devotion class. <laughs> in um, the southern section, the fifth wave, the chapter is called Stai Bhava. You can research further. But the essence goes like this. There's different persons who understand the science of rasa differently. And there's five. Those that experience it. Those that have attained the stage of bhava. Those that intellectually understand rasa but haven't experienced it. Those that have a misunderstanding of rasa and those people that are animals. They have no understanding of rasa at all. So, those that have no understanding of rasa at all, Rupa Goswami goes on to say, when they, specifically he makes reference to Ramayana, when they hear 
the activities of Ramayana. And there's many, one of which we're going to be discussing today. The terrible feelings, terrible feelings of Dasarath. According to Rupa Goswami, this is one of the twelve kinds of stai bhava. And the Sanskrit term that Rupa Goswami uses is karuna. And in some places, in the same section, he uses shoka. Now there's harsha and shoka, there's happiness and shoka, distress, in the language of Bhagavad Gita. And Karuna has different meanings, the meaning that he uses in Rupa Goswami uses in this section is lamentation and sorrow. Well, I'll point it out, but you can, if you hear with those ears, you hear his sorrow. Specifically, Valmiki uses the word sorrow. Dasrath feels sorrow. He's, he, and initially, he, seeing Kaikei, he's jubilant. Then he sees Kaikei in this condition, per the instructions and contamination of mantra. He sees Kaikei, his favorite queen. He says to Kaikei, next to Ram, you're the most dear person in the world to me. And seeing you in this condition brings me great karuna, sorrow intense and then goes to another kind of sorrow and then another kind of sorrow and he, he lists the various kinds of sorrow and so to hear this it's painful now dear devotees better watch out you might if you become attached to Ram you might feel sorrow In Brihat Bhagavatamrita, in relation to Krishna, Narada Muni is discussing with Gopakumar and others about features of sorrow within Krishna's pastimes. And he says what I, something similar to what I just said. Most saintly persons, they don't like to discuss at all about Ram's departure from Vrindavan because it's so painful. They may think, they, they, the hearers may think, oh no, I better not get attached to Krishna because then I'll have to experience those feelings. But touching on the subject, he can't stop talking about the subject. He goes on for you know, volumes and volumes and volumes. Because, according to Rupa Goswami, in this chapter of Stai Bhava, it's ecstasy. For those that know, those experience rasa, those that experience bhava, and even those that know intellectually, he uses the word intellectually, they conceptually know, it's bliss. But when we hear it, we don't have that, oh, this is blissful, you know, notion. It's, it makes you sad. Just hearing, because poor Dasarath, he's at the end of his life experiencing this horrific, Prabhupada calls it reversal in general. You're going this way and all of a sudden you're going that way. circumstances come into our life when we're moving this way and all of a sudden something happened. Calamity. Now, one of the questions we touched on the other day was how do you handle that? Well, and the answer that I gave and I'm elaborating on it is you have to know where your shelter is. You have to know what your purpose of life is. These are very practical things because we're living in the world that has duality and 
If we identify with duality sometimes and sometimes, because that's the way it is. So how do you deal with the sometimes or the sometimes, the happiness or distress? Don't become the enjoyer of the happiness and don't become distressed by the distress. Well, how do you do that? You have to have transcendental shelter. That's our life as devotees. We're being given the opportunity to have transcendental shelter and not be buffeted by the winds and the comings and goings of the waves of the ocean of material existence that come and they go. And they, sometimes they're, it's a storm, big crashing waves and and whoa. Sometimes it's milder, but it's always something. It's always something. It's always something. When is it not something? There's always something. So how do you handle it? Especially when the waves become very big and stormy and Transcendental shelter of the personality of Godhead as the goal and be all and end all and as long as there's other stuff going on, you're going to experience that turbulence. But for transcendentalists, it's blissful. It's a mystery, isn't it? We don't want that. We want this. But transcendental life is shelter of Krishna and even for Dasarath, Koshalya, not Ram, because he's Lord Vishnu and he's Lord Vishnu. He experiences transcendental sadness. We'll hear. But to understand Ayodhya and to understand Lord Ram and these pastimes, it helps at least intellectually, we're not at the stage of Baba and we're not at the stage of Prema, but at least intellectually have an understanding that this is bliss. Oh, well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like bliss to me. Rupa Goswami says this feeling of karuna or lament, intense lamentation, it gets more intense and more intense. He faints. He becomes unconscious multiple times. We're going to hear. Disbelief. And he tries this way and tries that way. And the obstacle doesn't move. Rupa Goswami teaches that this feeling gives rise in the science of rasa to vaibhav and in that state of vaibhav krishna appears or in this case ram appears and it means it starts in the mind and the mind's thoughts about the supreme lord intensify so he appears in the mind that way and then intensify and intensify and eventually He appears. <coughs> Let me remind you, I hope you don't mind a nectar devotion class in the morning. I'll remind you of something that we heard when we were visiting Sutta Gadi. We heard Sandilya Muni and we heard Kalindi reveal some important mysteries of Braja. The remedy that Sandilya Muni was giving to Vrajanab was get the association of Uddhava. He gave two things. Go to Braja and do your seva. What's your seva? Find the places of Krishna's pastimes, establish villages in those places of Krishna's pastimes, serve the dham, serve the rivers, serve the living entities there and your heart will be contented through the medium of service and service and hear from Uddhava. 
Because what Uddhava can do is he can impart the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. How can he do that? He heard it directly from Krishna. How did that happen? Krishna gave it to him. Krishna. Find Uddhava. He gives some indication where to find Uddhava. And when you hear Srimad Bhagavatam, complete the chanting of Srimad Bhagavatam by uproariously chanting the holy name, ecstatically chanting the holy name. They go together. And Kalindi shared another mystery, like why amongst all the queens she was this in this position of undisturbed. And she said, because you don't have the you don't understand this mystery. And she shared the mystery and she she explained how to get that to serve Radha. And how do you get there? You have to get get the association of Uddhava. It's really wonderful. It's a mystery. But he's revealing the mystery and we with to us. And they heard from Uddhava and Uddhava said Bring Vajranaba and <clears throat> Brikshit Maharaj and all the queens and come here and have wonderful Sankirtan. This is Kalindi. And then Uddhava will come and Uddhava will speak Bhagavatam and everything will be nice. So they had the wonderful Kirtan and it was ecstatic and Uddhava came and became more ecstatic. You know, these are mysteries. And Uddhava had become a blade of grass. Uddhava the most intimate associate of Krishna outside of Vrindavan went to Vrindavan, underwent austerity so he could become a blade of grass. Why? Because he wanted the dust from the feet of the gopis. But he knew that they would not be willing to give him the dust of their feet. And so, I'll become a blade of grass to get the dust of their feet. And then my karuna or shoka of feelings of separation from my beloved Krishna will be believed because I'll have their association and through their association of the service of Radha with the service of Radha Krishna will appear and everything will be nice now to get there there's like many steps and there's feelings connected to getting there it's in, it's in Rupa Goswami's teachings there has to be a hankering uses this word lolium, greed. Not kind of la-di-da, complacent, but intense longing. Now this is for elevated souls. We're not there yet, but the, the path that we're being given is to get there. Just follow the path we're, from whatever position you're in. Follow the path. Know what the goal is. Know where your place of shelter really is, not the temporary things. The place of shelter. Rupa Goswami, in this section of Bhakti Rasarmi to Sindhu, goes on to describe, mentioned yesterday, there are, of these 12 rasas, there's residing deities, forms of the Supreme Lord. And Kapila is the Lord of Shanta. And then so forth and so on. The primary rasa is Krishna is the presiding deity of Karuna or sweetness. So like this devotee yesterday, Rameshwara Tirtha Prabhu was asking why is there not the same Ananda. Bingo, the Ananda is in Braja. But there's another bliss, another Stai Bhava, and that's presided over by Ram. And Ram's place is Ayodhya. And that Rasa, secondary Rasa, is lamentation, sorrow. Huh, who wants that? 
It gives rise. It's it's a it's a blissful condition that gives rise to an intensified feelings. Listen to listen to Dasrath's intensified feelings. He already has maximum feelings, and they become maximized beyond the maximum. Exactly as Dasrath you heard yesterday, Dasrath instructing Ram how to be better than perfect. <laughs> You're already perfect. Here's how to become better than perfect. I'm your father. I have to give you instructions. That's the relationship, and that's what the that's what he does. And Ram hears the words of his father and does what his father says. It's very deep. It's a very bhakti is very mysterious. Fortunately, we have Rupa Goswami who discloses the mysteries. It's a spiritual science, and then there, so there's the intellectual understanding, but they follow the path. It goes beyond the intellectual understanding into the higher and higher stages. We, but we have to follow the path. We have to have a good teacher, good instructor, and follow the path. Don't deviate from the path. Don't go this way, that way. Stay on the path. Therefore, the function of Guru, that's Vishramitra, and his relationship with Ram. Previously, was Vishishta, but now, by Ram's arrangement, a special privilege is given to Vishramitra Muni to have him marry Sita, to deliver a halya, and so many other nice things by his mercy, and instruct them, and give them weapons, and da 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 da. da, da. He has that function. And so the position of guru is a function, it's a service. It's a very important service, very confidential service, done properly. One can't progress without it. You can't just get attached to Ram or get attached to Krishna without it. It's You can't do it. It's not part of the, the path that Krishna gives. You, you go in some other path. That was the condemnation of Vishramitra Muni. Excuse me, Trishanku. Trishanku said, you know, Vishramitra, excuse me, Vishishta, I want a da-da-da-da-da-da, impossible. Go to his sons, I want da-da-da-da-da. But your father said, no. You're mad. Well, then I'll find another priest who will help me. You're worse than mad. You're a chandala. He was very determined. Anyway, there's so many lessons. But for us, here we are in Ayodhya, and we're hearing the pastimes that let us try to understand the deeper mystery of the pastime. The past times, plural. And we're going to be shortly hearing one of the horrible pastimes, sorrow filled pastimes, shoka filled, karuna filled, lamentation, sorrow, pain. Blissful. When properly understood, at least intellectually, notionally. Then the heart can be relieved that it's not just misery because those that don't, those that have a misunderstanding and those that are just animals, they hear it and go, oh my God. Let me out of here. Why is, you know, that, why do bad things happen to good people? You know that one. It's a classic. Why do bad things happen to good? Ras Ras good, good. And he says, what has Ram done? What have I done? Kai Kei. If we've done something wrong, let us know and, and punish us accordingly. But there's, there's no wrong. He's a perfect person. And, and what have I done? Anyway. So it's, it's quite unreasonable. And the obstacle doesn't move. 
Anyone know that territory? I know that territory. The obstacle doesn't move, it just stays there. What do you do? That's real life. Not just, you know, a nice book written two yugas ago. Rupa Goswami goes on to say one of the byproducts along with the bhava the feelings for Krishna intensifying Krishna uh, appears or Ram appears the Lord appears is vikshepa vikshepa We're going, I'll point it out as we go along at least initially and then you'll have to hear with your own ears distraction those of you that are familiar with the, the teachings about chanting the holy name like you know Thakur writes about it Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur writes about it there is this thing called distraction it's the opposite of attentiveness distraction we all know that territory distraction territory put your hand in your bead bag and start chanting and the mind goes somewhere Mikshepa. now on the level of rasa which is the platform of dasara he becomes distracted by this sorrowful event and his mind goes here his mind goes there and he's it's blissful on the platform of rasa it's blissful on the platform of where we are it doesn't help your chanting Supposing you have a problem, your mind goes to the problem instead of your chanting. Yes? Yes, Maharaj. What do you do? Know very clearly what your place of shelter is and go there. It gives rise to an intensive, done properly, it gives rise to an intensified effort to take shelter simply of the holy name unlike when things are nice and then you know la di da complacency sets in this side or that side become attached to the name become attached to the Bhagavatam and its message become attached to the person our process is personalism and become attached to the persons who are helping you get there. He even goes into saying, Rupa Goswami, saying these, in addition to having presiding deities of the different rasas, they're different colors. Twelve, it's a rainbow. And this, just I found it interesting, this Karuna Rasa, he says, is purple. Doesn't give an explanation, just assigns or reveals this purple. Rodra, that's presided over by Parashuram, anger, it's red and so on. So the intensification of meditation upon Ram during this very sorrowful, sorrow-filled event of Dasarath is intensifying his feeling even before you know, Ram comes the next morning the mystery let's dive into the ocean of the mystery here with that ear by the the kind assistance of Rupa Goswami I want to read just one paragraph 
from uh, Nectar Devotion, Chapter 34, where Prabhupada writes, summarizing all of what I just shared from Rupa Goswami, this chapter, Stai Bhava chapter. Short. An apparent pitiable condition in devotional service may appear distressing to the inexperienced student, but the feelings of the devotee in this pitiable condition are considered to be ecstatic by expert devotees. For example, the subject matter of the Ramayana is sometimes considered pitiable and distressing to the heart. But actually that is not the fact. The Ramayana narrates how Lord Ram was sent to the forest by his father just when he was going to be enthroned. After Ram's departure, Maharaj Dasrath's father died. In the forest, his wife Sita Devi was kidnapped by Ravana and there was a great war. When Sita Devi was finally delivered from the clutches of Ravana, Ravana's whole family and kingdom and Ravana himself were vanquished. And Sita Devi's trial by fire. And some days after that, she was again banished to the forest. All of these subjects in Ramayana seem very pitiable. And they may appear very distressing to the reciter, but actually they are not. Otherwise, and this is, he's now, Prabhupada is referring to a verse in this section by Rupa Goswami. Why would Hanuman, a great devotee of Lord Ramachandra, recite daily the transcendental activities of Lord Ramachandra? as they described in the Ramayana itself. The fact is that in any of the above mentioned 12 transcendental humors of devotional service, everything is transcendentally pleasing. Even it may appear to be otherwise for those that are animals. or have a misunderstanding of rasa and think horrible and it oh, so it's, it's horrible and blissful at the same time so yesterday evening we heard of this jubilant arrangement made by Dasarath to invite all his ministers and sur surrounding area kings and the, the brahmanas and Vashishta and Vamadev and place before them his idea that Ram should become king the next day. And they said yes and he said why do you say yes and they gave the reasons why they say yes then he said so be it and arrangements were being immediately being made that very night he brought Ram into the chamber and this public assembly and instructed him and then he went to his room and he, when he went to his room he was falling asleep and having these recurring bad dreams and invited Ram and said I, I want this coronation to happen pronto and for these and those and the other reasons. And that's where we ended. Oh, Ram went back and informed Kashalya, Kashalya is blissful. She already knew how fortunate Sita knew. Vishishta came and instructed how to perform the properly with all the details of fasting and rituals and this and that. Now it's the next morning.
Oh, it's not the next morning. Yes, it is the next morning. <laughs> Having ordered the installation of Ram, King Dasarath, this is the evening, left the assembly and entered his private quarters. So it's still the evening before. And when he he decided, let me inform my my favorite queen, my most beloved Kai Kei. He felt that way. And when he entered her chamber, she, she wasn't there. This had never happened before. So he saw the doorkeeper. She was embarrassed, hiding her face. He asked her, where is Kai Kei? With, with folded palms, looking down, she said, Kai Kei, he has become angry and she's gone into the sulking chamber. Just hearing that, the shoka begins and it intensifies. He becomes big shape, I become bewildered and disturbed. Why is this? He goes into the sulking chamber and he, what he sees, she sprawled on the floor in some improper manner. Her hair is all over the place. Her ornaments are all over the place. She's wearing a very simple garment instead of her royal attire. And he starts, he's, Valmiki says, he was pained by sorrow. His mind became gripped with fear out of love for her. And he starts his, what's the cause of this discussion? Who has offended you? He's probing. Who has insulted you? On whose account are you lying on the ground? You appear like a person possessed by an evil spirit. And my mind is disturbed. Vikshepa. I have skilled physicians. They can bring you relief. Tell me what your illness is. She's remaining silent. No words. Whom do you seek to oblige? Or who has displeased you? Who should be rewarded? Or who should be punished? I'm the king. I can do all of these things. Just say it. What person undeserving of execution should be killed or what person deserving of death should be freed? I'll break the laws of ruling as the king for you. What pauper should be granted wealth or what wealthy person should be made destitute? I and all my possessions are under your control. I do not dare to impede any of your goals. Tell me what is on your mind for I am prepared to risk my life for it. Knowing well my strength, you should not doubt me. Then he makes his pledge, first of three, because she refers to it later. I swear to you that I shall do whatever is pleasing to you. Still lying on the floor, Kai Kei says with a whimper, I have not been offended, nor insulted by anyone, but I have something I wish you to fulfill. If you want to do it, if you promise to do it, then I will explain. So two more times, Dasrath gives his promise. Kai Kei, do you know that in this world, there, except for Ram, there is no one more dear to me than you. So second time. I swear by Ram to fulfill your desire. Whatever it is in your heart, I swear by Ram that your request will be fulfilled. 
Kaike sits up for the first time. She motions with her hands. Let all the gods headed by Indra, let the sun witness your promise. Let the sun, moon, sky, fire, day and night, the four quarters with the presiding deities, the universe itself, and the indwelling Paramatma in everyone's heart. Take heed of your great vow. This highly glorious emperor who is always true to his word and who knows what is right has given me his promise. Witnesses. Then she went on. Dear Dasrath, do you remember long ago when there was a battle with the Daityas, the demons, you were helping the demigods and you were laid low by the firing weapons of the demons and I rescued you on your chariot and took you to a safe place because at night when you were lying on the battlefield, the demons would have come and devoured all the persons who were still on the battlefield. I saved your life. And when you were revived the next day, you gave me this promise that I would have two boons. And I said, not now, my Lord. I am, I'm very content. But later at the proper time. Do you remember that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember it very well. Now I want to fulfill those boons. Here they are. Bharata should be installed as prince regent of this kingdom. He will be the successor king of the entire Koshala dynasty, the Ikshvaku dynasty and Koshala kingdom. And Ram should be banished for 14 years into the forest, wearing tree bark and eating only roots and fruits and sleeping on the bare ground. If, after having sworn on the strength of your righteousness, you do not grant me these two boons, I shall give up my life this very day, being insulted by you. Then comes Nikshepa, following the sorrow, one gives rise to the other. Am I having a daydream? Is my mind hallucinating? Is this a flashback experience or some kind of mental derangement? Dasrath faints. After he begins, so I'm just going to cover some of the direct, because it's all the detail is very interesting and important and hard to reproduce just by narration after fainting he regains consciousness he looks at Kaikei and all he can say is oh how awful and he loses consciousness again then he regains consciousness and asks what offense has been committed against you by Ram or me? Ram always offered you service as if you were his mother. Then another point. I can give up Koshalya, Sumitra, my wealth, or even my own life, but not Ram, who is so affectionate to me. If Ram departs, I'll lose my life. She's emotionless, stern and angry. If you're so determined to have Bharat become the king, let him become the king. But don't send Ram to the forest. Kaikei, haven't you said so many times that Ram 
serve you more than your own son, Bharat? Haven't you said so many times that you have more affection for Ram than your own son, Bharat? Why have you turned against him? Why do you wish harm to him who has spotless character? I do not remember him saying anything unkind to anybody, ever. She's emotionless, unmoving. How can I break this news to Ram? Now I'm going to read. I have no other goal than him in whom reside forgiveness, austerity, renunciation, truth, righteousness, gratitude, as well as non-violence to other beings. Kai Kei, be kind to me, an old man on the verge of death, who am treating you piteously again and again. Whatever there is on earth, I shall give you. Do not bring about my untimely death. I offer you respect with folded hands and touch your feet. Take shelter of Ram and spare me from the righteousness of breaking my previous promise to coronate Ram. Kai K finally speaks. Valmiki Ramayan says, guided by two things, the bewildered intelligence created by mantras association and confused by the gods. Again, this is a theme of Valmiki Ramayan. This is a designed deal so that Ram can kill Ravana. It's part of the mystery. Looking contemptuously at Dasra, she spoke fiercely. After granting boons and failing to fulfill them, how will you again proclaim your piety? She's playing on what she knows her noble husband holds as values. It guides his life. She's chopping at it. When When in an assembly of sages you are asked about your promise, how will you reply? Will you admit that you proved untruthful to your own dear wife to whom you owe your very life? Having once granted boons and having again sworn three times to fulfill those boons, you will now falsify your word. She's now standing and her face is red. She's angry. She felt cheated. He had promised her anything. Now he's trying to go against his word. To her, this confirmed the doubts of his sincerity of all the buttering up words that he presented to her. Oh, you're special to me, blah, blah, blah. He had no intention when he made that promise to fulfill the promise. That's how her mind was working. Kai K was furious. The king was prepared to sacrifice anything for the sake of Koshalya's son, but he cared so little for Kaikeyi that he would deny her rights, even if it meant bringing infamy upon himself and his dynasty. Kaikeyi said no. No compromise, because the idea was Ram, Bharat becomes king, but Ram stays. 
No compromise on Ram's exile. And if you don't agree, this very night I'll swallow poison and die and you'll have the shame and karma, the guilt, the sin of having killed your wife who you gave promises to and that went against. You'll have killed me. Hearing her speak this way, Dasarath was speechless and again he fell unconscious. When he came to external consciousness, he gives some other reasons. He's trying different doors and they're all locked. <laughs> She's immovable. Bharata will not even reside in Ayodhya without Ram. How will I face Ram and everyone else? I banished my son who is virtue personified for no reason. He's done no wrong. He's done no sin and I banish him. How will people regard me? How will I face Ram? How will I face Kushalya and Sumitra? And then he just saying the words Kushalya, it irritates Kaikei. There's some rivalry. Whenever Kushalya, who sought to please me, who gave me my favorite son, and who always speaks sweetly to me, served me as my maidservant, a friend, a wife, a sister, and mother, I could not treat Kaushalya kindly, though she deserved it, for fear of offending you. You know, when you have multiple wives, it can be a problem. <laughs> you show kindness to one, the other one is feeling, oh. Dasrath's mention of Kushali only made Kaikei more furious. What a blatant lie! How did he expect her to believe that she was more favored than Kushalya? In desperation, the king was ready to say anything. Her eyes became more red with anger. This is Valmiki Ramayan. So he just spoke about Ram, the people, and Koshalya and Sumitra. Now he speaks about Sita. Sita will die in the absence of Ram. And I will not be able to live. And then himself, how will people feel about me having banished Ram? She doesn't respond. He says, I know Ram. He'll follow what I say. You know, go into exile. And this is going to be the death of the dynasty. After my death and the exile of Ram, what atrocities will you commit against my beloved surviving relatives? You're so cruel to Ram. What are you going to do to everybody else? If Kasalya misses me and Ram... And my other two sons, Lakshman and Satrugna, unable to bear the agony, she will follow me to the abode of death, having thrown Kushalya, Sumitra, and myself, along with our three sons, into hell. Are you going to be happy, Kaikei? You'll have to take care of the Kshuaku dynasty yourself. He's babbling. <laughs> if... The exile of Ram is acceptable to Bharat. Do not allow him to perform my funeral rites. After my death and the exile of Ram, as a widow, you can rule over the kingdom with your son. How will Ram bear the difficulties of forest life? Kai Kei, I beg you give up this terrible idea and he faints again when he regains consciousness she's merciless 
she asked him, You are known. You hold yourself to be a man of truth, faithful to your vows. Why do you wish to neglect granting me my boons? She's thinking, You favor Koshalya more than me. Da 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 da. I promised the coronation of Ram. It's hopeless. The night is coming to an end, the dawn is about to arrive, and he says two different things, let the morning not rise, oh, let this be over, let the morning rise. He's really lost it. With dawn, dawn about to break, the musicians come to awaken him. Hearing the musicians, he tells them, go away. Kai Kei repeats, three times you gave your promise, three times I've asked you, please confirm, fulfill your promise. Dasarath, I reject you and I reject Bharat. He is not saying yes or no. Kai Kei says, then I'll call Ram and I'll tell him you gave your promise. Do your duty. Finally, Dasarath says, Bound with the strong cords of morality, I'm helpless. My judgment fails me. Dikshepa. And this, in this evil hour, I seek refuge of Ram. Bring my gentle son before me. One of the arguments that Bharata gives to Ram about how can I possibly rule the kingdom? Even Dasrath depended upon Ram. How am I going to rule the kingdom in the absence of Ram? Dasrath, our father, 60,000 years. He ruled the kingdom. How will I do this? I'm this little guy. I am not qualified. Now it's morning time. The musicians have been dismissed. Samantra, not knowing anything what's going on in Koshalya's or Kaikei's chamber, he comes. He announces in with different song and sweet words and glorifying the king Vishishta has come Vishishta we visited the place where Vishishta had his ashram so he's come to conduct the coronation of Ram he's ready Sumantra so seeing Dasarath in this condition he's shocked there's another sorrow, lamentation, karuna, shoka. Just seeing him, his beloved master, dear most person in the world in this condition. He's never seen anything. And why is he like this? He's been, for his whole, for so long, he's wanted a son to, to become his successor long difficult arrangements and then some sons were born and now Ram is 27 years old and he's ready to be coronated and look at him why is this Dasra can't speak Kaikei speaks Osa Mantra the king, due to the excitement of the coronation of Ram, passed a night sleeplessly and has just now fallen asleep. Go quickly and bring the glorious Prince Ram. Think no further of this. Samantra so says, O oh, impatient woman, 
how can I go without having received this order from the king? The king says, I wish to see Ram. Bring him right now. Confused, not knowing what's going on, Samantra goes. He finds Ram, it's morning time, dress ready, in proper attire and ornaments and sandalwood paste, and there's Sita with a peacock fan saying, Your father, Dasaratha, is requesting your presence. Please come at once. Ram says some pleasant words to Sita. Father must have some important... And Kaike. Ram must have some important instruction for me for this wonderful day, the coronation ceremony. I'll be back shortly. Ram gets on his chariot, goes to the Dasra's palace. It says specifically he passed through the first three outer gates in his chariot then he got down and walked the remaining two so there's apparently five gates and at last he got to the inner chamber of Kaikei and what Ram saw was amazing despondent miserable withered faced Ram doesn't show any change of emotion. He bows before his father and then he bows before Kaikei. Dashrath can only say one word. Rama. 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 Lord Ramachandra says, Kaikei. Why is my father not greeting me with affection as he has always done? Even when he was angry with me, he would greet me graciously. Why is it that he's feeling some agony today? Please tell me. Kaike. And boldly and brashly, Kaike says, He's not angry, nor in agony. However, there's something in his mind which he will not disclose for fear of hurting you. Having made a promise, the king now repents and wishes to retract his word, just like any other common man. Truth is the root of piety. If you will undertake to do whatever the king may ask, be it good or bad for you, then I shall explain everything. And Ram is taken aback, saying, What's this? Why are you having any thought, or to speak of words, to say I'll do anything other than the desire of my father. That's my principal guiding force of life. Dasrath remains quiet. Kaike reveals her plan. As a result of the two boons, I've asked for the boons. These are the two boons. Overcome by compassion for you, the monarch cannot even look at your face. Ram, make good his promise and deliver him from his difficult and awkward situation. So she, she had made him promise, I'll follow what my father said. I'll, I promise I'll follow what my father said. Ram's reply, is that all, mother? Expressionless. So be it. And gives his reasons why. However, there's one anxiety I'm feeling. And the anxiety is, 
why Dasrat didn't tell me personally what he wanted. Very clever question. So, and as far as you, Kaikei, if this is something that you wanted, you wouldn't need my father's promise to say that's something you wanted. I would have done it anyway. This very day, I'll leave for the Dundak Forest. Kaikei, let it be so. Messengers should be sent to fetch Bharat immediately. O Ram, get out of here. And go to the forest at once. Before the end of the day. Don't be concerned for the king's silence, for he is too shy to ask you himself. As long as you have not left, the king will take neither food nor water. So you don't want to starve your poor father. So get out of here. Hearing Kaikei speaking these words, Dasrath faints again. Ram goes to pick him up to comfort him. Kaikei tells him, get out of here. You should go at once. And he says, Ram says to her, surely you don't see any good qualities in me because you, again, you didn't have to have my father pro fulfill the boons that he gave you. Just ask me and I'm gone. You must see nothing good in me. So he goes, and Dastra's agony, yeah, Karuna, Shoka, spikes again, becomes intensified. Ram bows at his father's feet, circumambulates his father and Kaikei, and shows no visible <coughs> impact of what he's just heard. Harsh words, etc., etc. We all know what, you know, hearing harsh words, sometimes it affects us, right? Not wrong. He gets on his chariot and goes to deliver the message to Koshalia. Everyone seeing him pass along the roadway, they didn't see any external change in him. There was no clue about what had transpired based upon his countenance. He was as cheerful as usual when he saw Lakshmana. Lakshmana had a clue of what's going on. Lakshmana isn't feeling, he, he's changed by this bad news. Bliss, right? Stai Bhav, one of the twelve. We're not so transcendental. If you have empathy for others and you hear what these, per we're going to hear it some more. Again, you know, after breakfast. Vaishalya and Lakshman and Sita and their feelings. It's, it's filled to the brim with these feelings. Now each has a relationship. Different. And the relationship becomes disclosed even more deeply through the circumstance. How do they respond to the circumstance? Their attachment to Ram is unflinching but their relationship is different. And when there's hardship or calamity or tribulation or reversal, whatever the right terms are, <clears throat> all kinds of things come out that don't come out when it's ordinary. 
So the extraordinary shows all kinds of things. And we're going to get some picture of the relationship with each of these persons and the, the kind of attachment, the kind of love that they have for Ram. The, the all-perfect, as we, going back to the very beginning, the all-perfect hero. And they have different affection for him according to their rasa with him. So, rasa, there's five primary, and then the secondary ones we know from nectar devotion, sometimes eclipse the primary ones, but the primary ones don't change. The secondary one seems to supersede and then recede because the, the steady ecstasy is always there. And the secondary rasa is now going to reach a pitch. See after breakfast. Shri Ramachandra ki, Shri the Prabhupad ki, Gor Primanandi. Hare Krishna. Uh, some important announcements this morning. Uh, after lunch, today we will be going to uh, 